Hey everyone, and welcome to the third tutorial, I think this is, the third video tutorial at least, on Java programming. Here are my new set of Java tutorials I'm making. And uh, today, uh, which I've called day two this lesson, but to a fact, it's only been three days since last time. Um, today we're going to be learning a bit more on Java. We're going to be seeing a bit more methods, parameters of methods, and we're going to see the first uh, parts of the loops. Uh, so let's get to it. First of all, we're going to do a small recap on the last lesson's uh, thing, uh, topics, which were statements and methods mainly. Statements, you know, are single instructions that the Java <laughs> executes, and they all end with a semicolon. Methods are names for sets of instructions, so you can define your method, and all the, all the statements that are within the body of the method will be executed oh well. Will be executed if um, all the statements inside uh, the method will be executed as you call the method anywhere from uh, from anywhere you program. Now, parameters of methods are uh, a very useful thing when you are using methods. So, this means that you can give your method some values, and these values will be used or can be used inside the method. So, here we've got our assign values method uh, we used last time, which creates two variables, one called x and it's assigned the value 5 so 5 goes into x and another one y with the value 3 however every time you run assign values these same uh, variables will be created and this may not be very useful so if you want to this uh, capital letter in the public uh, is wrong by the way it should be lowercase if you want to <laughs> change the numbers uh, the variables yeah. If you want to change the, the values of the variables, then you must um, create some parameters in your method. And the parameters are created by adding, creating new variables inside the brackets of your method. So inside the brackets of assigned values in the creation of our method, we write the data type of the variable we're going to use and the name of the variable, then a comma and the next variable and so on. We can add uh, lots of different parameters, maybe unlimited, I don't know. You don't specify values for these parameters. So then, when you call your method, you would write assign values and then between your brackets, the numbers you want to assign to n1, n2, and so on. And then, the value of n1 would be assigned to x, of n2 to y, etc. I'll do a video on examples on, of this soon. And, if your method returns a value, you can use it as if it were a variable, more or less. Uh, so if you got an int c, which equals x plus y, or 3 plus 5, or any other combination of values, you may want to use a method plus y if your method returns a value. In our case, the method get value returns 3. So it will be 3 plus y. <laughs> to, for a method to return a value, it must be declared in, uh, inside the method's creation. So instead of public void, as if it was last time, right here in the assigned values, now it's an int, and it must return an integer value. If we put double, we return a double value, and so on. In RSBot, if you write public boolean, then it must return true or false, and this is especially useful uh, within the RSBot framework. In order to create your own methods, you have seen they have three unique identifiers, public or private, and this means whether they can or can't be accessed from the classes, the data type of the method in double boolean string or void, in our cases, <laughs> there it can use all of the primitive data types. If you are scripting for RSBot, you may want to use RSTyle or pointer or something like that. And finally, the method name. So in our get value, we've got public, and this means it can be accessed from other classes, int, meaning that it will return an integer value, and finally the name get value. It has no parameters. Should it have any parameters, they would be uh, created inside these brackets, such as these two parameters. <laughs> Our first own methods. Remember we must uh, use public or private, the data type, and finally the name. 
So our assign values method was public, meaning it could be accessed from other classes, void, meaning it doesn't return the value. You see there is no return statement here, and the name is assign values with no parameters. Finally, in the body, we see int x equals 5, int y equals 3. Then we've got assign values with two parameters, and the n1 and n2 get assigned to x and y, respectively. And finally, we've got a new method, which is private, meaning it can only be accessed from within the current class. And if this isn't really clear for you right now, clear to you right now, um, then I create a new video with an example uh, soon. It returns an integer value and the method is called new value. It has a parameter of number. <laughs> this number is used when declaring the variable num and then the value return is num. This means that when we call our method we're going to write new value and then for example 5. So new value and between the brackets number 5. And um, this 5 is what is assigned to num, 5 times 3, so num is 15, and the value that is returned is 15. Now, our next topic is hello, uh, hello world, user input. Um, I'm a bit uh, lost today. Got my finals tomorrow. And, well, our hello world program looked mainly like this. Our public class, which is hello world, then our main method, and then our uh, hello world printing statement. So, if we want to print what the user inputs, so the user inputs a phrase and then we print that phrase out, we must use a class which is called scanner. The scanner class is used to take information from the user. <laughs> so, to create an object of a class, it will allow us uh, to use the, the, the methods inside that class. So, if you remember from the first lesson, a class is like a container uh, uh, and it contains many methods uh, which we can only use if we create an object of that class. In our case, our object is created by first defining the data type, which is a scanner. It's not a data, but it's a class. Uh, so, it's more or less like declaring a variable. We put first the class, which is scanner in our case. Then we name our object. I've named it scan, but we can name it however we want. Um, and then equals and the new class so new scanner if we were using the scanner class or new RS style if we're using the RS style class etc and between the parentheses the brackets of the scanner class we must input from where we're taking the information in our case since we're taking the information from the keyboard we must write system dot in finally we're printing out to the user to input a phrase so system up print and please enter a phrase and then we're creating a new uh, string variable where we will store the user's input. So string variable and the name is txt and it will equal the next line of the user's input. And since the method next line, you may see it's a method because it's got brackets at the end, the method next line is inside the, scan, um, the scanner class, we must uh, use it by writing first the object of the class we're using, in our case scan, and then a dot to declare we're going to use something that inside uh, the current level, so we're using something in inside our class, our object, so we write object name, dot, and then the method, next line in our case. And finally we print out the txt, which is our variable which contains the phrase the user entered. <laughs> finally, Loops. I'm running out of time, so we'll do this quickly, and on the example it will be a bit quicker. The do while and while loops are pretty simple. The syntax is do, and then between the brackets what you want to do, and then finally while something, uh, while a boolean condition. So this code here is going to be ran whilst n1 is under 10. And every time we're running the loop, we're incrementing n1 by 1, so it will run 10 times. And this is the same, only that while true, system up and high, we're going to be running this uh, again and again because the true condition always evaluates to true. And now I'm running uh, pretty much out of time, so if you wait for the next um, uh, tutorial where I'll put examples and explain a bit more in depth, then it'd be great because you will understand fully everything I am doing here. So, thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next tutorial very soon.